I, 28 male, recently invested a ton of money into a high-end gaming setup, like top-of-the-line monitors, crazy RGB lights, the whole shebang. I've worked hard to save up for this and it's basically my pride and joy. I live in a nice neighbourhood and generally get along with my neighbours. Here's where things took a turn for the worse. My neighbour's son, a young teen, is obsessed with gaming. While I've occasionally let him hang out in my room, I've always made it clear that he isn't allowed to touch my setup when I'm not around. He's always a bit too handsy and I didn't want my gear damaged. Last week I was out running errands for a few hours. When I get back home, I find my gaming setup missing. Confused, I search the house. Both my parents and my roommate are also home and no one knows where it is. After a frantic 30 minutes, I get a text from my neighbour saying, thanks for letting my son borrow your gaming rig, he really enjoys it. I was livid. I stormed over to their house and confronted them. The kid had literally taken my entire setup, monitors, keyboard, everything, and set it up in his room without asking. The dad thought it was no big deal because kids borrow each other's things all the time. I told them this isn't how it works, and I demanded they return everything immediately. His dad kept saying I was being overdramatic and should lighten up. After an intense argument, I told them I was done and their son was banned from my house forever. I don't want someone who steals my things and thinks it's okay to think they can just waltz in and take my stuff whenever they please. Now I'm getting backlash from several neighbours who think I'm being unreasonable and that it was just a misunderstanding. They even suggested I should just buy him a cheap gaming setup if I'm so worried about it. So, am I the idiot for banning my neighbour's son from my house after he borrowed my $2,000 gaming setup? Edit, for clarity, I live with my roommate in our own place, not with my parents. They were visiting me. The neighbour's son has been over plenty of times to hang out and game with us, so my roommate thought it was fine to let him in. I guess they assumed it was a safe and familiar environment. Still, I never expected he would take something without permission. It's a situation I never anticipated. I did receive it back, but it had some minor damages from the transportation. Not the idiot. The neighbour's son stole your property. It doesn't matter if it's a gaming setup, a car, or a candy bar. Taking something without permission is wrong. You should have called the cops and pressed charges. The neighbour 100% knows his kid stole the rig and was trying to resolve it without the kid being arrested. That would have been, my idiot teenager is going to be grounded until he can vote. Please, please don't call the police on him from me. Ah, as soon as his parents started giving any pushback, the police should have been called. The kid stole your gear. How the heck did he get into the house and be allowed to go into your room without you being there to begin with? Your housemates actually let him walk in and take it? I'd have a bunch to say to them too. As for the other neighbours, it's none of their damn business. It's not your kid. You don't owe him or anyone else an explanation for this. The little thief is entirely out of order. I'm a teacher and my husband and I have two children. When we were first expecting a baby, we talked about what we wanted for our child's name. Something important to both of us was a name that was unlikely to be misspelled. Using my experience as a teacher, I compiled a list of boy and girl names with which this tends to be a problem. I also included another list of names that, while generally easy to spell, have many different spellings that are considered correct and could be annoying. Five different spellings of Haley as a big example. The list is pretty long. Some of the names people would be like, OMG, no, that's not misspelled often, but I have heard of it happening enough that it made it onto the list. My brother and sister-in-law are expecting a baby together. He wanted to avoid names that are highly likely to be misspelled, so he asked me if I would make a copy of the list to share with him. Of course, I said yes, and I saw no reason not to share the list. But my sister-in-law was not happy. She didn't like that I had any part in the decision. My brother told her it would be a good resource to have while they search for names. She told him the list was too long and wasn't my place. They argued and eventually asked sister-in-law's sister, who's a labour and delivery nurse, if she could confirm that the names I wrote can be misspelled somewhat often. She confirmed the names and said everything I added was correct. Like I had, she clarified that it didn't guarantee it would happen, but often does. Sister-in-law still didn't like it and asked me if I'd saved the list to interfere in other people's naming of their kids. I said no. I kept it because my husband and I didn't know if we would have more children together. But I wouldn't deny sharing with someone else because it's not a list of names I'm telling people to use and I told her I'm not even saying not to use them. In my experience, as a teacher who speaks to kids, they get misspelled. Sister-in-law said it wasn't my place to share any list. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It actually was your place to share the list because you were asked to. 
If you'd shared it without asking, then you'd be an idiot, but because you were asked, it was perfectly fine. This is your brother's baby too, and he has a right to consult whomever he pleases for opinions on names. Yes, he should also be discussing things with his wife primarily, but he's absolutely allowed to ask others for info. Honestly, she's upset because there was a name on there that she really wanted. Agreed. Opie, it sounds like your brother may have used your list as a way to potentially blacklist names that he doesn't like that she may be adamant about. Again, not your issue, but he just made your sister-in-law think it is. Just stay out of it and let them two fight it out. Don't make any more comments about names. Not the idiot, but you now know she's going to be a bit of a doozy. Oh, I'm sure it was a name that had a unique spelling. In some countries like mine, there's a long, long list of names that is legal to name your child so as not to get children with weird names like Apple or Haley, H-A-L-E-I-G-H, and to prevent bullying. There's over 10,000 names and you can petition to the government if you want a name to be added. This means that, yeah, there is some difference in how some names may be spelled, but not like endless or someone decides to add a number in there for good measure. My mom petitioned for my middle name and now it's on the list so anyone can pick it. With how some Americans spell their kids' names, I can see how this is necessary, especially when the kid is travelling because most European countries will never have met a Haley or a Ryan, R-Y-E-A-N, etc. My now ex-partner asked me to marry him even though I told him that I didn't ever want to get married again. There's not really much to this story because the title explains it, but I, female 42, have talked multiple times with my partner, male 43, about this topic. I told him that I never want to get married and it's not about him, but it's just the fact that I see no point in it. I was married once and had a horrible divorce when my ex tried to take our daughter and more. Basically, I decided I never wanted to bond with anyone in that way. It's easier just to break up than to divorce. My partner isn't really happy with this and he asked me multiple times what would change my mind. I just don't want to marry him. These questions started infuriating me and would lead to arguments because I said it a million times. The last time we had an argument was at the beginning of July when he started that topic again and I told him that I thought we needed to stop this relationship because it was obvious we didn't agree on it. I made a big deal about it and my daughter and his kids were mad at me because I wanted to break up, but he didn't. I decided to stay and I was finally convinced we were done with this topic. He agreed to just continue living together until we went on vacation to Greece last week and for some reason he asked me to marry him. It made me so mad. I seriously didn't know if I wanted to cry or scream. He asked me this in front of my daughter and his kids, making it even worse. I said no and went back to the room. They stayed behind and probably talked crap about me. Still, I now realise that not marrying him was a good choice because even though I said no multiple times before, he thought that if he pressured me on vacation, in a public place and in front of the kids, I would feel obligated to say yes. I packed my bag and told my daughter to do the same. She was mad at me, but she'll get over it. So we came back from the trip only two days after we arrived. I don't want to continue this relationship because I feel disrespected and disgusted by the way he thinks. Yikes, and I personally don't think I'm an idiot and this is more of a rant, but I guess you tell me. Not the idiot. He asked me this in front of my daughter and his kids and it made it even worse. This is a total idiot move. Really just unforgivably manipulative. No matter how many people pressure you, it's after all your life. Exactly, it's not your fault. You were very upfront with him. It's not your fault he chose to do that again. You did not ruin the vacation, so stop that. If anyone ruined it, it was him. And as long as I'm on a roll, one more thing. Pulling that stunt in front of the kids was very manipulative. I would really rethink this relationship. One more thing. I've been married twice. Don't do it. Unless it's a pre-agreed conclusion, all public proposals feel cringy and desperate. The vibe is that the extra social pressure will get them across the finish line. Yuck. Those arena-level proposal fails are simultaneously hilarious and heartbreaking, but the smell of desperation comes right through the screen. I think you should explain to your daughter why you said no and left. Tell her that you repeatedly explained that you didn't want marriage for an extended time and that now your ex was pushy and then ignored your wishes. Explain that that is not a healthy relationship where people aren't listening or respecting each other. This could be an important lesson for her in a healthy relationship. Apologize to your daughter for cutting the trip short, but it had to be done. Update. Little add to this, many people mention that my past relationship is the reason I don't want to marry, but no, it's not. I don't even think about my first failed marriage and it's irrelevant. 
I just don't want to get married again because it doesn't feel special or important anymore. Besides that, since I left from vacation last week, he sent me multiple messages accusing me of cheating and that being the reason I don't want to get married. He called me some shameful names, so that tells me enough about how much he really loved me or cared. Safe to say this relationship is completely over. My husband and I have three kids, a tween, a pre-tween and a kindergartner. We've had the same babysitter, Amelia, 20, for almost five years. Amelia has filled a few different roles for us. She was our date night sitter, then during the global issue she was our nanny, went back to date nights and now she gets to our house at 7.15 every morning, gets the kids out the door, drops them off at school or camp, then twice a week she babysits at night so we can run errands or get some time to ourselves. Amelia's sweet spot was 2022 to 2023. She had her car and license, games and activities planned for everyone, was always on time and prepared, and was generally more available and focused. She's still good now, but doesn't always come with crafts and activities, can be 5 to 10 minutes late, and often orders DoorDash for herself to our house. It's all manageable, and she still knows and loves our kids, and she's very affordable. The final straw for my husband was when Amelia told us that she'd recently been diagnosed with autism, and that she thinks our pre-tween should get an assessment, as they are exactly alike. I never would have known Amelia is autistic, but I'm willing to get an assessment. My husband saw it as rude and thinks she shouldn't have brought it up unless we asked. He thinks it's time to get a new sitter, so I told him we can get a new sitter if he can find someone just as good as Amelia for the same rate as her. He says we can afford better than Amelia, so we can spend more and get someone that will be focused on their work like Amelia used to be before she started college and got another job. I know we can afford more, but I still want to stick with Amelia. Am I the idiot for telling my husband the only way we can replace Amelia is if we can find someone as good as her for the same price? Not the idiot. First, Amelia has been your sitter for five years. Have your kids ever had another sitter consistently? As much as Amelia likes your children, your children are probably attached to Amelia. Amelia was replaced without a conversation with them, explaining it would be difficult for them. The younger two are at an age where they may believe Amelia isn't there because they did something wrong. They're going to ask where she is and why she left. Your husband needs to be prepared with answers. So your husband is mad at Amelia for doing a job and bringing up potential issues where early intervention is literally life-saving? I was almost 40 before I found out I had ADHD. I had no idea other people didn't think the way I did. I would have loved it if someone told my parents when I was younger. So many parts of my life would have been so much easier. And why are you angry she orders DoorDash? You should be ordering food for all of them and include your sitter. Or provide food for her as she's travelling from school to her other job and to your house. I bet she barely has time to take care of herself and get food. It's the least you could do. You all are ridiculous. Your husband's an idiot, period. And you're an idiot for thinking this isn't good enough. You're mad she's slightly late sometimes or doesn't have activities planned every time. She's in school and has another job. She's doing you a favour. I hope she quits. My 27 female friend, Jordan, 28 female, is a wonderful artist. I love her work, so I told her that I wanted to be her first customer if she ever considered doing commission pieces. She said okay, and I sent her a picture of my dad, who passed away as a reference. I wanted to give this painting to my mom as a gift. This was back in early 2018. Jordan said she would start on it when she could, but was busy. She didn't want to do any commission work yet and left it at that. A few weeks after our conversation, Jordan posted on social media that she was open to commission pieces and how she would charge for those pieces. I messaged her again and she said that she got my order and was starting the piece for me. Per her post, I assumed the piece would be around $200. She also said she was charging her clients around that much, so I should expect to pay about the same. She said she didn't want me to pay until after she was done, so I didn't. For the last six years, she's posted her other commission pieces. When I asked about mine, she would say she was working on it, but she hadn't had the time to finish it. She often lost her job and was looking for a new place to stay, etc. I understood that times could be hard, so I waited. I didn't just stop asking her because she would sometimes send me Snapchats of sneak peeks of the painting, so I knew she was working on it little by little. Well, flash forward to last weekend, she finally gave it to me. It's a beautiful painting of my dad and I cried while looking at it. She then told me it was $700. I wasn't prepared to pay that much. I told her that when she started doing commissions, she was charging her clients two to $300. 
She responded saying that she realised her work was worth more and the cost of supplies had gone up since then, plus the amount of time spent working on it. I thought it was unfair to charge me so much, given I waited years for this painting. Also, within the last six years, I've gotten married, bought a house and have two young children. I do not just have $700 to spare on this painting. She told me it wasn't her fault that I couldn't afford it and refused to give it to me until I could pay her. I told her to just keep it since I didn't have the money for it. She called me a jerk for wasting her time on this and left. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She took six years to finish it and yet raised the price by hundreds of dollars. She took advantage of your friendship. You aren't the jerk here. The second, and I mean the second she decided that work was worth more, she should have contacted you and discussed the particulars. Also, other pieces were being finished well ahead of this one. If she wanted to charge more, she should have finished in a timely manner. Everybody else gets theirs on time for $300, but you wait six years and she wants double? Nope. I mean, if you want to go the actual business way, six years delay? I would tell her that sure, $700, and then you will deduct $100 a year of delay. So, $100. This is in all seriousness a lose-lose situation. You want the painting, but it's worthless to her because it's of your dad, so I'm guessing it's very specific and will be hard to sell to other people. Either try to talk reason with her, or just live with having to pay that. If you want to be petty, say you can pay her 200 now, and then the rest over time, and then wait six years to pay the rest.